a lot of hardware there. That's right. We went jewelry shopping. Yeah, Kazakhstan cuisine. You ain't good. <laughs> hey, Terrence, uh, you know, you joined the uh, elite crew of like Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Burrow Duran, Shane Mosley, I can't say pronounce Manny Pacquiao, uh, all these guys who went from lightweight to super middleweight. Like, it's that small elite, every single person's name is all time great. You just, you just, how does that feel? I feel great, you know. Uh, it was one of those missions that we was on, and we wasn't going to let nobody or nothing take it away from us. Champ, you've moved up multiple times. How does this time, moving up to 154, compare to the other times you've moved up, 147, 140? I felt great. It was, it was no different from 147, to be honest. Uh, Israel just was a strong uh, opponent, you know, and we knew that coming in the day. Do you have a mantra of a harder puncher than Spence, you would say? Uh, I don't know. They have their moments. You know, uh, both of them were very strong, but Majumov was strong. Yeah. How unusual was the movement, the constant fainting Madrimov did? It wasn't, it wasn't like disrupt, disrupting me or anything. It was his patience. He was just patient. He was just waiting. He had faint, 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 and just keep fainting until he get a little closer, a little closer. So he was real patient in there. He wasn't rushing in with nothing. He wasn't winging those wild winging shots like we normally seen him in the previous fights. Uh, he was very disciplined. We're accustomed to seeing you switch between southpaw and orthodox throughout a fight, and you stuck to southpaw for most of this fight, even though you kind of kept getting with that right. Why not switch a little bit up? Well, you know, uh, the right hand wasn't bothering me. You know, I wasn't really too much worried about the right hand. You know, he, he landed a couple of times at the end of the round where, where he was trying to steal it around. But um, I just was trying to uh, counter counter him. But at the same time, he had a good game plan. He had a lot of feints. And I was just trying to dictate when he was going to come. A lot of times I was wrong. Did you feel the fight was like an offensive counter fight? Like where you guys both waited and when he kind of took a, a step and you kind of took you kind of like raced to each other a little bit? Yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, like I said, he was just waiting on me. Like, he was doing a lot of movement, but at the same time, he was trying to counter me like I was trying to counter him. So it was a, a mixture of counter to counter. Did you see a lot of yourself in Majuma? No, I won't say all that because I was, <laughs> I was touching him up with the jab. I think my jab yes. was beating him up uh, uh, all through the fight. But, you know, he, he landed a couple of uh, right hands that was telling for the the judges to go or the fans, but it wasn't nothing that I ain't ever seen before. How does he rank? Was there anything that surprised you about him? Hmm? Was there anything that surprised you about Madrimov's movement or anything? In no, the we knew he had good movement. We knew he had good uh, hand movement. We, we knew he was strong. We knew he was durable. You know, um, if I was to say anything that surprised me, it's his patience. You know, he was real patient in there. For someone with 10 fights, Terrence, did that, did that surprise you at all? And, and how does he compare to your other top top opponents that you faced? I won't say that he surprised me with 10 fights because you got to understand, he got over 300 and something amateur fights. So he know how to fight. He know how to move around in the ring. He knows how to capitalize on people's mistakes. He's been around the game for a minute now. Um, just because he got 10 fights, that don't mean that. Look at Lomachenko and all these other fighters that's getting title shots with 15 fights, two fights, and stuff like that because they're on the fast track because of their amateur pedigree. But what did you, sorry about that, but what did you think about the, the Eddie's reaction to the scorecards? I don't know if you heard him on your way out of the ring, but he tried to make it seem like there was some sort of robbery or that the scorecards were wider than they should have been. Man, you gotta understand, that's his, that's his fighter, you know? He's gonna he's gonna say anything that he can to hype it up. You know he knows that guy lost, and and so do his team, and so do he. Ter Terence, can you talk to us about the sense of occasion tonight? About the this, it was an incredible event to be at. Uh, you you really soaked up the atmosphere on your walk in. You you had the biggest smile on your face. It was an incredible event to witness for us in the media for the fans. Can you talk to us about how it made you feel? Well, it made me feel great to see all the stars, 
all the uh, people that came out to support Terrence Crawford and Majma. You know, I understand that it was a lot of talented people on the undercard, but all in all, they came to see Terrence Crawford. That's you right. know, when you look at the stands and the, the people, when they start filling up the seats, is when Terrence Crawford was getting ready to fight. Well, was this your toughest fight, do you think? You didn't, I mean, you won the fight, but I mean, nah. I'm trying to think what was tougher. I want to say it was my toughest fight. You know, I think uh, Me Machine was a tough fight, tougher fight than that. I think Gamboa was a tougher fight than that. I think Benavidez was a tougher fight mm -hmm. than that. You know, I might have got the knockout, but those was tough fights in their own uh, right. But for years we heard oh, from, from members. Oh, sorry. Shout out to Turkey. Happy birthday. Yeah. I hope you had a good uh, birthday. You know, uh, we put on, I appreciate you for coming to America and putting on for the United States. Uh, hope you have a great birthday. So for years we heard from segments of the boxing public, you were on the wrong side of the street, you couldn't fight certain people because of promotional divides. Turkey delivered a, a not just a, a, a fight for you, but an event. Can you talk to, to us about that? Well, you know, it's politics. Politics was blocking me out. A lot of the media was blocking me out because I wouldn't talk to them because they was switching up the narrative or they was wanting to be loyal to a certain promotional company, you know, and uh, it didn't make it no better that I didn't care, you know, so uh, we here now, everything happened for a reason, the cream will always rise to the top, you know, and if you look around, I'm the last man standing and I was the one that they was talking so bad about. Are you, right. well. well, are you happy to fight in other parts of the world as well? Are you happy to fight in other parts of the world? Do you feel like you got your, re your revenge? Um, you know, talking bad about you all these Shit, look at me. You know, look at me right here and look at a lot of them in the same room that was talking so negative about me. They want to get interviews. They want to sit up and shake my hand and be friends. And, you know, at the end of the day, they want to say it's just business. This is business. I don't hold it a grudge against them or anything. I just say, hey, it is what it is. Everything happened for a reason. And for that reason being, I'm still at the top. And I'm still, you know, undefeated. I'm still a four-weight world champion, a two-time undisputed champion, a right. uh, two-time SB award winner. That's right. You know, fighter of the year. Like, what more can you ask for Terrence Crawford? Did the gloves bother you at all? Oh yeah, what happened the gloves? with the gloves? Yeah, yeah. Did they bother you at all? No, not really. My coach had addressed some uh some things that he didn't like about Israel's gloves that um he didn't like about it. He brought it to a, a team attention and of course, you know, we're going back our, our, our coach and they stood on the they ground and said, hey, either you can wear the same gloves or, you know what I mean, or not. Did that bother you? So we chose, we chose to use the same gloves. So I asked, I asked Coach the same question, but I want your reaction. Is the Earl Spence rematch on the table still or? Nah. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap there. Thank you. <laughs>